Does your husband need yet another space to work? My husband needed another three car garage. So we decided to save some money. We were going to build it ourselves. This, is, this is a really long video that's going to show you the whole process of how we built this workshop. Okay, so if you want to see a shortened version of it, just keep uh, scrolling on our page and you'll see it there. Also in the description section, we'll put in different spots, um, different timestamps for different parts of the build. You ready? Yes. Let's get into it. <laughs> Should I go to the next slide or are we starting here? Yeah. Next slide. Beep. I'm just picking it up. What's this, Jim? So this was, we went to um, a local lumber yard and we found uh, kits that they were offering, right? Yes. And this was one that we thought was pretty close to what we wanted. And it's obviously a three car, uh, what was it, 812 roof. It looks like with three three windows and a door. So, I mean, this is pretty close to what we were looking for, right? Yep, yeah, it was. And they... Uh, they yeah, it's like a pre-packaged the... kit. So right. they have all the wood all figured out for you. So you don't have to tell them how many 2 by 4s you need or how many 8 by 10s I don't even know, how many 5 by 7s <laughs> whatever it is. He's the guy that took <laughs> care of all that. But So you don't have to think of all that stuff. Like, they have it all figured out for you. So you just purchase the kit. But we did make a couple of changes. You go further. They do. And that's the other thing is yep. that once once uh, you we saw what was in the kit, we said, you know, we want something a little bit different. Like, for example, actually, go on the next slide. Sure. Uh, yeah, so you can see here on, on the bottom part of the slide, it shows a particular truss. And we decided that we didn't. We, we didn't want this particular trust, and we decided to go with a different trust. Mm -hmm. yep. Trust on the next side? Uh, no, this is... This uh, is not the trust. <laughs> we'll get back to the trust. I'll timestamp the trust. Yeah. Uh, no, we'll get to it. It's, it's coming right up. Mm -hmm. So, so obviously, yeah, so there's different options for the foundation. Back in that um, that slide from the uh, from the lumber yard, they, they showed this particular type of foundation, which is a monolithic slab. And there's different ways of, of making foundations. You can do the frost walls, uh, or you can do this monolithic slab, which is a single pour, and it's way faster. And it's actually probably way cheaper because you pour all the cement at the same time. So this um, is just a, a document I found. It basically shows where you would put the rebar in here in order to in order to strengthen it. So the point here is that this is only like two feet thick. It basically sits on top of the ground instead of going down below the frost line. And uh, and we used uh, some four, number four rebar there and some number six welded wire mesh. I hated across that. The, yeah, it was horrible. I hated it. That was the worst part of this entire build is the wire mesh and the rebar. Yeah. Yep. Let's go to the next slide. <clears throat> yeah, just step I'll on your foot. Go to the, the next way. slide. I'll be like, well, I wasn't here exactly. Boop, here, I'll move out of the way so you can see. Oh, it's slide. Let's scrub it. <sighs> <laughs> All right, so over here was the original was the original truss. So this is like a W truss, and then we we talked to the um, the lumber yard. And we said, well, what kind of different options do you have for trusses? And they said, well, we have attic trusses and scissor trusses and other other types of trusses. So I was going to put a lift in over here. So I, I spread the space on these doors a little bit so we could put a lift in there. And then on this side of the garage, you have this particular truss up to here, right to there. So there's more overhead, so it goes up to 13 feet instead of going up to like 9 feet. And then over on this side, there's a loft because this is an attic truss that gives you more more space. More storage because he needs storage yeah, for all of his yeah. stuff because that's not enough. Yeah. <laughs> it's, <so mean. laughs> it's true. So up in the loft, there's another 220 square feet of, of space. Right. Um, so that was an upgrade. So that changed the price a little bit, didn't it? it? Was, yeah, it was, it only, was an upgrade it was to three, change. It was three hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars yeah. to so change. So going from a, uh, an attic that had no additional use. purpose yeah. or use uh, to having a scissor truss, which gave us another four feet of overhead, and the attic truss, which gave us another two hundred and twenty square feet of space, was yeah. three hundred dollars, which is well worth. Yeah, it was worth it for us. Yeah, sure. Yeah. What's this, Jim? This is obviously the location. This is the original picture we saw when we had just just finished the uh, the driveway up to this point, and so back over here behind the Mazda is where we put this building I grabbed in here. That's its location. 
So it's right, you're, basically your head is right I'm in front of I'm sitting right is. where our workshop is. So you'll see in other videos that we have on our page, we actually built our own driveway. We put in our driveway. Well, first we cleared the land. Yeah, this is a long time. We process. cleared the land. Um, we cut down all the trees, moved all the logs out of the way. We put in a driveway and we built this three-car garage. And we also finished all the interior of another three-car garage. So you'll see that. But this is the site yeah. then right where we are, so of the... Three car this this workshop that we're talking about here today. Right, and this there's uh we're we're talking about making other videos for the rest of that process because yeah. I don't know I mean I guess we people ask us questions about about this and I guess you do they'll believe that we that did we this ridiculous did it. job but it's 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 well within reach there's some a lot of time and a lot of effort and some special tools but besides besides that there's no reason we were able to do it yeah we were able to do it and actually throughout the the build we had I don't know maybe. Let's say two or three different weekends when we had we had family come up to oh, help yeah. us with certain spots, and we'll talk about yeah, we'll talk about Not those much. sections I mean, where it was only like yeah, we'll talk about we get yeah, it, yeah, it wasn't much. Do you want to go to the next yeah, yeah, so let's go to the next one? All right, so what? So this is our site where the uh, building actually is going to be. So at this point, we had cleared the trees, removed the stumps, right. and you taken a bulldozer, Weird. which was borrowed from my father-in-law. Awesome to let us borrow that piece of equipment. And you had kind of um, pushed, I guess, all the dirt to try to make yeah, it as even as possible. Definitely, Does you that want this it on the, yeah. There's two different ways you can do it. We had a really low property here, so so we made, just made it flat and we built up from there. But the other thing you can do is if you have a really good level of property and you want to dig down, you can dig your foundation down into the ground from there, and that actually will save you from having to purchase a lot of dirt, which we had to purchase. Oh, and I'd like to introduce a segment here. Yes. It's called Wait, Where Are the Kids? Where are the kids? Yeah, like it's yes. when you really get into a job and then you realize I haven't heard from anybody in a while. I don't know where the kids are. I, I don't know where they are. <laughs> Can I mean, we admit this? I mean, we've been cutting down trees, moving stumps, <laughs> and every once in a while you get to check in and find out where the kids are. So where are they? Let's do the count. So this is another count? good point here. We have yes. three kids. Three kids. We and three while boys. we're doing this, if you can appreciate having to deal with keeping the kids busy very important yeah. so here we have one kid helping us roll out some uh some geotextile underlayment which we put underneath the garage go nope oh. here we go here we this go is this is number kid. two he is supervising supervising he's okay. very good at supervising he's okay. a preteen keep going big supervisor and number three there he is plotting plotting his next move or what he's going to yeah. do in the woods our kids are really good they found lots of stuff to keep themselves busy they built forts yep um dug holes yeah, we'll talk about yeah. we'll talk about all sorts of this stuff. But you have to check every once in a while, you know, to find out where your kids are at. Uh, so all here right. we got two this. two uh two truck dump truck loads full of gravel. So this is about 30, 30 yards of dirt. Okay, so at Actually, this it's point, gravel. this is six. I uh, mean, uh, four inch gravel. We had the geotex underlayment down, and now we need to start building up. Right, we're building up, so we have to take all this dirt and we have to put it over there. So. The obvious thing that we that we have here is we have this this big machine where we can move this stuff around, and this is. Although these things are actually kind of affordable when you consider it to you know compare it to building a house, this is can, can completely be done by hand. Oh yeah, you could use a tractor I mean, too. Yeah, I mean, if you had a tractor with a loader, I mean, way obviously more you can use a wheelbarrow, but it would suck. But yeah, no, it's but you can do it. Possible. Go. Yeah. This video is gonna be so long. I think more and more. So this is the this is the pad. Right, the pad goes up to here. Uh -huh. And then this is all the pad for the for the uh, for the garage, and then this is the driveway. Okay, my bad. <clears throat> so oh, you can see you're moving the dirt we're moving we're moving the dirt around with the with the, with the backhoe. So it, this is more borrowed equipment. I mean, if if you have access to this type of stuff, then hurry for you. And if uh, you don't, like you can use smaller equipment. But honestly, if you're actually looking at doing this, I mean, these pieces of equipment they're like ten to fifteen thousand dollars for these giant pieces of equipment, and this this. It would save you a ton of time. Or you can rent them. I know we did have a company about 45 minutes it's from us here. But you can. You could rent it for one day, though. But if, yeah, you, sure. if you think you can just try to get all this stuff done in a day or a weekend, you could totally rent one for just a weekend. Yep. You know, or find a friend to borrow them from. Yep. You know, maybe build a friend. What else? So these are the forms. So we made our own forms. A lot of times people that pour concrete will have their own forms. And we obviously didn't. So we made some out of... Uh, Two by fours and plywood, which quote unquote worked. It worked. But, it worked. <laughs> but it Need a little reinforcement. But <laughs> this is a learning experience. There's things that you'll learn by doing this. Go. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. There I am. 
Good, perfect. Hold on, it's I like guess. it's like you're in stereo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I got a new pair of glasses. <laughs> okay, credit to Linda for taking lots and lots and lots of pictures because of all these pictures that you're seeing here, I took exactly zero, zero. I believe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might have that one weekend I wasn't there. Yeah, I did yeah. take some pictures. But he would often say, Would you get off your phone? But I was really just <laughs> trying to take pictures. I wasn't like browsing on Instagram or anything, okay. you know? Okay, go. So this is Charles and I, we're, right. we're bending a rebar, so um, obviously we're putting the kids to work, so this is kind of an important thing, so if he can bend rebar, he's looking to help, and here yeah. we are, bending rebar for the, uh, for the, for the slab. He was what, 11 or 12, maybe, so he's still Yeah, he was 12, so we're, we had, at the, this point the kids were 8, 10, and 12, Eight, I 10, think, 12. so. Old enough to help and do some work, so bending rebar, and I, I didn't have the strength, honestly, to bend the rebar, so it was good to have him around. Oh yeah, up. so it's a little trick, we're bending around the, uh, the ball hitch in my truck. So if you don't have anything that's like attached to the ground like we did, you can use a truck. Yeah, like if you don't have another building set up, like you don't have a workshop or something where you can actually go to, you have to, you know, be creative. Yeah, so sometimes you, you can do crazy things. Use the truck. Go. No, oh, yeah, bending it again. More of the same. A little, more, a little more bending. Because they had to bend it in a hook shape, right? Wasn't it like a, like a, um, a like a shape? candy cane? Like a candy cane, right? Were, because yeah. they were. I had another picture. Well, I they think were going around the them. corners and stuff. Yeah. So if you look here, you'll have one coming down here, and then kind of turning this way, whoop, this way. Yeah. One up here, and then you had the ones coming across the top, in some places coming down, and then we had the ones on the bottom that are kind of turning around. So that's all part of that slab design. And if you look online, you can you can find a way. Of, yeah. You know some some like the pattern. Some that, yeah. They had had to go down. So this is with most of the the forms up and in place, uh, and you can see where. Try, I mean, the, it looks pretty flat there. So the cat, the the cat is really trying to get that slab, that gravel within four inches of the top, like this 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 pad within four inches of the top of this. So when you pour the concrete in, I can't do it. When you pour the concrete in, <laughs> it uh it will go up to it'll go up to this level, and then it'll leave you with a four inch pad. I mean, four inches minimum. If you want to put in a lift, uh, you should check with the specs. Some some yeah. require six inch. Some require larger rebar, mm -hmm. uh, depending on what size lift you're putting in. Some or your brands. town's codes. You might have a code sure. in your town that says slabs have to be a certain thickness or something. So. so that's the other thing. Where we're really located, we can do a lot of these things. Um, but you obviously have to check with, yeah. with the... With yeah. the with and our code guy was great at helping us and answering sure. questions. Okay. So <laughs> now... Like, well, <laughs> last minute smoothing out, I guess, or moving around some yeah. dirt based on the fact that it was just, a little bit too high or a little bit too low. Right, so it's like gravel, basically. So basically, the backhoe is inside, yeah, inside our workshop yeah. right now. So, oops, what happened here? This was not me. This was not us. So at this time, up on the property, up this way, we were having another three-car garage being built, and you'll see that on our page. Go to another, go to another video, and you'll see the whole, the whole shebang what we have in our property. And we hired, we contracted out for the outer shell for that to be built. Well, the builder, oops, accidentally, as he was backing up, smashed into Okay, our, let's put some perspective. No. He backed up at least 100 feet down the driveway in reverse and then did not see this. Was, it's a good thing the building wasn't there. He didn't see <laughs> didn't it. see this. He didn't see it. Rolled over the forms and then had his secretary call me up to send me the message, oops. Oops. <laughs> My fault. Ha ha. Ha ha. Oops. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't even back up that bad. We, 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 uh, if you look at how bad he's like, there's like all like, there's tracks it. all in here and stuff. Yeah. It was like doing, like, what a mess. I don't know. So we had to fix that. Yeah, so right? and that's another, yeah. another patch. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, more close up. Yeah, so you can actually just, see. He was so angry, he had to show a double one of this, this right? So you could, find so wrong. Yeah, that was bad. Okay, so this looks like it's the beginning of the screening process. Right. Which I hated too. Yeah, screening stuff. There's certain things that I didn't like. I didn't like putting in the mesh rebar because I felt it was really <coughs> heavy and hard for and me. Go out here. And I Let's really didn't like screening either. So basically, we does it was sand at this point, right? It was either gravel or sand that this we had gravel. put down, yeah. right? And so you have to level it the best you can. Well, the way we did it was taking a two by four. Yeah, we, and the thing is, it has to be level, and it has to be below this level, so below right. this. So we would take. Like a, la a laser leveling. Did someone say lasers? Laser, 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 laser. We would take 
like a, la a laser level and hit a sight across from this side over to this side. Yep. And then this bar in the middle is exactly like in the middle. And then you take this screeding tool here. that we made. Like and it's like take this like this and kind of like <laughs> like push this back and forth and kind of make it flat so that the distance between like the top of the pad and the bottom of the pad was going to be the right the right distance. Yeah. Yeah, this jump sucks. I didn't like this. But again, you can do it by yourself. Save a lot of money. Yep, all by hand. All by hand. All right, so again, showing more of the screeding process. Yep, you see the screeding tools over here. So yep. kind of just rode on the uh, on the, on the rails here. On the rail and on the middle center beam. Basically made it so that we could ensure that the depth here was right. Oh. Linda Bizier work. Oh, this is the rebar. The rebar yep. goes on now. My bad. I, we had said it went on already. No, no I didn't say that. You didn't say it. I said it. it. Yeah. Whatever. So we have the the, so, uh, the the drop of the what's it called the uh, vapor barrier here. Vapor barrier. So this is pretty typical to put in a six mil poly vapor barrier underneath. And I basically, in this case, it's kind of like a bucket that holds in the uh, the concrete. Yep. Oh, and lesson learned here: the concrete when we pour the concrete in here, these uh, corners, even though they were held in by like screws, like this form onto this form, and they're kind of like you see they're staked every like few feet. Uh, and these corners blew out because there's so much concrete in here. There's a lot of pressure. So what, we, what they end up doing when they when we fix this is put like a metal band around this corner. All right, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you had to reinforce. Yeah, that, that corner had to be reinforced. And so, Actually, all of them. Yeah. So if you had to do, if you have to make something like this, make sure you reinforce your corners. Yeah. I mean, you can't overdo. You can't overdo the forms, making no. sure the forms stay in place. We thought they were. I thought they were like not going anywhere, and that yeah. was wrong. No, we were wrong. Yep. You're wrong. So no. rebar. Oops, sorry. So, yeah, so Linda's tying, giving these little ties. You can get these ties, you can get this rebar, you can get this poly, get all this stuff at Lowe's. Yeah. Or, you know, so it's attaching Depot. two rebars together with these little metal hooks, like tie wraps. They're like metal tie wraps. So it's wrapping around the twist, wrapping sure. around a twist every so many inches. Right. So this obviously didn't, didn't come like with this. the kit. The kit was just a building. And we had Correct. to, we went to Lowe's and had to pick up all this other stuff. Uh, but I think any big box store or lumberyard is going to have yeah. this type of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't hard to get. So we just, this is just that we measured the spacing so that we could remember where we put the rebar. That's it. Keep on going. Yep. Keep going. This is just stand off the rebar so that they don't sit on top of the poly. See, they have no strength here. So if you're putting rebar in across the floor. So we put some rebar in across the floor because I knew there was going to be a lift sitting here. And, um, you have the, these little stands that keep the, the rebar off the uh, oh, I forgot about off that. the bottoms because they need to be right inside the Yeah, they need to be in the concrete, the concrete, so you want, yeah, I forgot about that. Oops, sorry. Here, so, yes, yeah, so you can see, I'm not good at these are the little stands. Yep. I really can't get there. You can see the bend, so the bend there rebar here, and here's some here's, here's stand little stand -offs. Offs. Well, Again, you just buy those right at the right bendy the, bar. That's what our oldest son was bending. Supply. He was doing yep. that earlier. Okay, Keep same going. thing, yep, that's where the lift is going. So by now, then we put on this mesh. Yep, the metal mesh. Metal mesh. Right, so we, yeah, we can lay it on the metal mesh and when the concrete uh, pours come in, they'll, they'll, pour, the, they'll right. pour the concrete down here and then they'll kind of, what they're supposed to do is try to peel this mesh up into the concrete mm -hmm. so it's about like halfway yeah. through the concrete. Yeah, so that's the mesh. So that's a six inch so this is like the wire mesh. I think one of the the worst part yes, of doing yes, the entire yes. thing was like this part. The rest is he. Oh, yeah, it's a good close up of the mesh. Yeah, and you can see over here near like the head. edge, it comes. I can't. Just, it comes over near the edge, and that kind of turns down. Yes. So there's so, more. So it goes cement. Way on more the cement edge. on the edge. Yeah. That's on the what, outer edge. All together. Yeah. Ta-da! Look, that's magic. It. We get. Oh, how did this happen? Oh my goodness! Like so magic this is, one day like this. Boom. So one thing is that we did all this ourselves except pouring cement. I, we don't have a cement mixer. We looked at pouring the cement and the special tools we need to, oh to, to smooth this out and all this other stuff. And we said, you know, for the price, we got someone to come in yes. and, and pour, the, they were great. pour the pad. And, and they it took... did a great job. And you can see they put the stress lines and they had to cut it. And they actually, you know, we gave them some materials to put in like the uh, the rebar here. And they cut out little, little, uh, like little... Mm -hmm. I don't know, like a slant sure. for the uh, garage. Oh door, yeah, like like know. so that you can actually so it's not a you know you drive into it so it's like a slant so your car can drive up. Right. Onto yeah. the... Oh wait. They did that. Where are the kids? Where are the kids? Where are the kids? 
Oh. There we go. Wait, one's behind your head. There we go. Okay. There's two of them. <laughs> There's two. Playing on a cement pad. There's two yeah, of the kids. Perfect. Wait, that was it? actually really fun. When we when we drove up and we saw the cement pad was down, they're like, can we run on it? Wait. We're like, I hope so. We're, miss I mean, we're missing one. But we're missing one. Where's the other one? One, two. Oh, there, there we go. It's busy. This one built a chair. Yeah. Uh, extra two by fours. Yeah, he built, built a chair. Good, perfect. Yeah, why not, right? You keep the kids busy? Build a chair. Thank you, you know? Where is that chair? I think it's outside. It's now. outside. All right, so next step was to put the cinder blocks around yep. the edge. So these weren't strictly required, and the plans didn't have these in there, but I put these in for a couple reasons. One is that... Uh, the, the snow and stuff like that if you have like snow that comes up to here you don't want it sitting up against the side of the building so if you have like and also splashing rain when rain comes off the uh the roof it like splashes off the dirt and hits the side of your sure. building makes it rot out faster so we raised it up with uh eight inches here with cinder blocks and the other thing that it did was it allowed us to go from a seven foot door garage door yeah. to an eight foot garage door because it gave us just enough height mm -hmm. to in order to fit a full a full eight foot door in there that's math and calculations that math. you need to do to figure it out. Yeah. Math. So, so yeah, we uh, I, I calculated that. He calculated that out at the eight inches. <laughs> All right, some more cinder blocks. Yep. Along the edge, which looks really nice. And ah, we're framing the exterior walls. Right. So, so this how did how do you do that? So you take. You take a bunch of two by fours or two by sixes. Yep. This is a two by four. This is a two by four construction. Uh, and this this is like a design design decision, which is, do you want to go two by fours or two by sixes? How much insulation you're gonna put in or any at all? Um, definitely, since you have to make, we didn't think we were gonna heat this all the time, and didn't think it was necessary to put in two by six since uh, because there's no we're not gonna put in two by six insulation. There wasn't really a reason to. Right. So we had a, uh, a pneumatic nailer here, and we were off right. grid a little bit. So we had a generator. Yes, yeah, so we no power. Right. At this point, we had a roughed in driveway, no power. Yeah. No water. So we had to bring in generators. We had two generators. Yep. That we would run uh, when needed. So yeah. So he would lay down a two by four, and then put these ones in. How much? How did you space those? 16 right. So, oh, actually, you can see the generator. So, the generator back here. This is a Honda, with the Honda inverted generator, which is really quiet, but also uses very little electricity. I mean, they're better part fuel. of a thousand dollars. Doesn't use a lot of fuel. What did I say? Uh, electricity. Doesn't use a lot of fuel. It's very fuel efficient. It's about sixteen hundred watts, and uh, doesn't use a lot of fuel. And it, uh, they bring mostly everything. Yeah, they have um, ones that are similar to that. They're Harbor Freight. They're like half the price. I, I haven't tried them, but. But then, we like this one. It's it's this one we have and it works beautiful. great. And the point is that this guy could run a um, like a what's it called like a six gallon six gallon pancake compressor and the six gallon can pancake compressor could run the air gun the air gun the air fr the framing nailer which yes. was also from uh, Harbor Freight yes which was uh, really cheap and actually worked great. We can review any of these products. Yeah, we if should. If it's something where you're like, I want to know more about that generator, let us know in the comments and we can make a separate video where we just give all the specs yep. of it and explain how we used it. And, and how well it worked out. And how well it works. Yeah, or if it didn't work out. There's a couple tools that I, that I killed for sure. Yeah. Uh, but anyhow, so here, and, and I guess there's there's nuances to to the types of nails that you use and stuff like this. Some places don't oh, yeah. allow the clip nails. So, but in this case, it wasn't an issue, but we, we took it, you know, you laid out a two by four, we end nailed it over here with a couple nails, and then you do the other side. And it's all just measuring, make sure everything's 16 uh, inches on center. We have 16 here. Yeah, so you need like markers or pencils or something to mark them, tape yep, measure, sure, yep. and someone to hold the other end as you're nailing yep. them in. Because if not, it makes it really hard to do. Yeah, you can yourself. just by yourself, but it sucks. Yeah, two people, much easier. All right. So, oh, there's another kid. Oh, yeah. There's a kid. There's <laughs> a kid. So the other two were actually at their grandparents for the weekend. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, they were. I remember this. Now so they we only have to find one child. Yes, yeah, so this time we only had to find one. <laughs> it was really easy to keep one with us. Uh, and this one wanted to help. He was feeling like he wanted to do something. So it was good because he was able to help pull, uh, pull push, push, I guess, up yeah. the, the, the walls. And then, so this is, you can see, there's only like a 10-foot section of wall here, but it gets really bulky and hard to move. So if you have someone, even a 12-year-old, that can help you lift up a wall, it's way easier. Yeah. And you can make them as small as segments as you want. Yeah, I don't like think you, you really want to make can't, it so small. I mean, It'd be a lot more work. Yeah, but you could. Sure. But yeah, all you need is like a 12-year-old, borrow a 12-year-old. That's it, borrow a 12-year-old. 
All right, there they are again, holding it up. They're probably waiting for me to hold it <laughs> so that they, but I was too busy taking pictures. But, you know, I probably got yelled at there. But actually, is that the part where the window is? Yeah, that's an opening for a window. So right here is an opening for a window. So that's why it looks strange because yeah. we, were gonna, we weren't sure exactly where the window was going to go or we just didn't frame in the window yet. But that, that's why there's a space there. Oh, there they are. Securing. Hey, they got the first corner done. Yep. Look so at that. Start so start in a corner, obviously, because it it's uh, a lot more structurally, you know, yeah, you have some integrity good. when you have that, that corner built. So start mm -hmm. in the corner. You can see we staged some other walls out over here, and we just kind of built a few walls and put them on one at a time. Yeah. This actually came up really quick, I think. It, it only yeah. took a couple hours to get all this done. Whoops. Did they hit it? No, it's good. Yep. And if you think your walls are floppy and all, if they don't look like they're exactly plumb, then, you know, you can put in some of these diagonal strengtheners uh, to make sure that it's not, that it's not, you know, moving around and falling off. off plumb. Right. Yeah. Those are just to hold it tight. Um, yeah. Just well, yeah, exactly. And fall over. All right. Another good view of it. Where we got kid? So here's the other oh, generator. Oh, there's the other generator. This is a... I can't. There it is. <laughs> there it is. This is the other generator. So this is the big generator. We needed this one to run the big um, compound miter compound yeah. miter so this isn't even that big this is like 500 600 bucks yeah, you can get them even cheaper again harbor freight if you're a harbor freighter and we've uh, had this before we had this before the bill yeah, we've had, we had this, this for one ages we've had because this we, was, we used to lose power all the time ago. yep and this so, is like a 5500 watt generator yeah yep we'll them. review this guy too sure all right that's jim admiring his work very pleased with the work that weekend. That was really a morning. Yeah. And yeah, it didn't take them long to get that done. Okay, more frames. So you can see by now, we put into the garage doors. Yeah. One, two, three would be here. So that this guy, the far one, has a big, I can't get up there, there we go, has a big thick piece of wood up there called the header. Yeah, good. You nailed it. The big thick piece of wood called the header, and that's a. What, the jack two by eight? Uh, no oh, this is a two by twelve. A two by twelve. Yeah. So, um, the, like I said, this came with a kit, so we already knew where we already knew what the, what we we're going to put in there. But um, generally, depending on the span, you take the span in feet, and then you make your header about that thick in inches. Okay. So in this case, it's a nine foot opening, and we put in a two by twelve. So I guess you could have gone with a two by ten, but these are twelve. So I think it's pretty typical size. And you can see over here these other these other jack studs and king studs. Are kind of just balancing because there's nothing really holding it together until you put in these uh put in the headers and then on top of everything we put in the uh the double top plate the top the second top plate will kind of holds everything together mm -hmm. yes and that you want to make sure you always put over joints like yeah overlapping joints Overlap. sure, yeah yeah so that would make no sense otherwise um, so so this is we looks like we framed out the door yep it does it looks like the door has been framed out over here so yeah, it looks like great. the top plates are on there now yeah yep and that, okay, so those two by oh, actually, 12s back to are the door heavy. For okay, back to the door. Here's the door. So Sorry, this door mouse. actually was ended up being like a quarter inch too low oh. because of, I, I maintain it wasn't me, but um, storm doors, door exterior doors, like normally when you have like an 80 inch door, you build an, an 80 inch, an 80 inch frame right. or whatever, an 81 inch frame or something. So I think I, I, I don't remember what exactly it was. I could go and measure it. But I think mm -hmm. I, met, I put this in, which was the right size for like an interior door. Went to put in the storm door and it literally did not fit. And then I went and we, uh, we ended up doing, it wasn't even close either. We ended up getting a different door because yeah. a different door was like an inch, an inch yeah. smaller than the, the door that was the exact same size. That came with the kit. Yeah. So the door that came with the kit didn't fit. So that's actually living in our shed. Right <laughs> that's right. That's right. Spare door. Yeah, Anyone spare wants a door, door in the know. shed. It's just sitting there. <laughs> but it's there. Who knows what we'll do with it later. You know, so you got to think about where you want your door to go if you want it to come in like this okay, or open. Want like that. So we want it to come in up against like this door here. Yeah, open. There's like a little bit of space. And that's why there's a little bit of space between this door and the corner to, for this door to kind of sneak right. in. Right. For it to open. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we put that first that first header and it wasn't super heavy. A two by twelve is heavy. No, a two by twelve is heavy. <laughs> was, I can't I really couldn't I lift. So it was, was really all on this him. upper ladder like this. Yeah. Up this ladder. And then I said, you know what, this is dumb. Let's get let's get some bigger equipment in here. Yeah. So you can do it with one person. You uh, can way two easier people. with one person and <laughs> some heavy equipment. Yeah. So at least it just held it the back yeah. at least just held it up so that we could um he could nail it in. Yeah. Without needing me to Hold it up. 
You can see, yeah. So here I'm just kind of moving into place. Right. So it just balanced it just to, to get into place while I was taking pictures. Yep. There's so a third one we got put in. Third one. So all three head is in. Boom. Look at that. Yep. And you can see the top plate Boom. on top of both of those there. Yes. Holding everything together. So everything's framed up. This is all the entire exterior completely framed out. Yep. Yes. Well, yes. for the walls at least. For the walls. The exterior walls. Well, yeah. Not Frames. The roof, obviously. Well, there's no interior walls. I know, but it needs a roof. I'm just saying. The exterior walls have been framed. <laughs> Another view of it. We're really proud of this. Yeah, we're like, we really proud walls. when you get something done. You know, like, oh, we're almost done. No. Yeah, we're almost done. No, not even close. <laughs> See, the thing is, I've never built anything before, so for me, every time we did something, I was like, oh, we're almost done, you know? <laughs> but no, but it felt good. Another view of it. Wow, okay, here we are. Next, you have to put in the sheathing, which is this really heavy, um, with a 4 by 8 plywood. Yeah. Three quarter inch? Look uh, at me, I'm trying. 7 sixteenths. 7 sixteenths. Yeah. yeah. So this wasn't too hard to do for the first level so the first level not that hard to do right jim just kind of lift them up i kind of held them in place and then he um would nail them yep. in place now as we started to get to the second like the second tier there i can't point you can point to it the second tier yeah vanna thank you um he bounds he put like a couple of nails in yeah he put some nails in right like right in here and yeah. here to, and he to looked up, it. put the board up on top of it. It's kind of balancing on the nails while you, while you nail it. Then in. he couldn't see where the nails were. So I had to go on the ladder on the inside and draw, have a, um, a string with a weight that, start, that went down to show him where the 2x4 was so that he could nail it into the 2x4. Remember to do that? Yeah, I do, but I think it was at a different time. I you think know, I something I should have mentioned earlier, which I didn't, no. is that this, this pad is actually completely level. Which is kind of unusual for a garage. Usually you would have like a pitch oh, on yeah. the garage, like it would come down a little bit. So that if you got any water in there, which happens all the time in the garage, it kind of like, kind of like, you know, go, comes out over the edge. But when we did that, when we had that single pour, it didn't make a lot of sense to do that because mm -hmm. the cinder blocks would have to be on a, on, on a, oh, yeah, a would have to have take to... up the difference and yeah. that would be hard to do. Or you would have to pour another pour in here that kind of like tapered off, you know, right. tapered off. Or you would have to put wood on top of this that also tapered off. So I said, you know what? We're not going to do any of that. We're just yeah. going to make it flat, and then everything's going to go on really easy. So that saved a ton of time. Yeah. But it does have some issue, does have some repercussions, which is you know if you get water in there, it might not it won't it won't drain. Yeah, it doesn't It'll drain. It out. So you got to make sure that you keep your water out of the garage. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so that's the sheathing. So that is yep. Yeah, so that's that. <clears throat> So you can see that. So you get the sheathing all the way around. You can cover up through the windows. Like you just keep going all the way through. Yeah, you can cover up for the windows, but it's so it's easy sweet. to do afterwards. Yeah. And it, it wastes a little material. Oh, you framed in the windows. You can see here it. that you actually framed yeah. in the windows here. So yeah, you did yeah. frame in the windows. Remember the big spaces were there before. And now he put in a header, just like a header for the garage door, one for the windows. And here's another lesson learned here. Something that seemed like a really good idea at the time, mm -hmm. but it was a wicked bad idea. Is you look on the on the top of the, the header, I just put one two by four in the middle. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, well, I'll just I put know. a two by four in the middle. You know, it's halfway in between. Why not? So if you look on the bottom here, th these weren't on 60 inch centers. So this is where the 60 inch centers were. And so what you have here is like your insulation. If you go to insulate this, you can't fit it in there because it's either too wide or not wide enough. So you're always battling with that stupid stud. So don't be cheap ass and <laughs> put, take these two. Take these two and put these up here. Just put a second board in there. Just put a second board. Yeah. Yep. All right. So. So this is a uh, drainage we put down the. Oh, yeah. Well, remember right the in slanting front of the... issue. We didn't have it slanted. Right. So, so we, we wanted to make sure that any drain. water that came in here, like when, like came into, like when drained away and actually comes out and goes around the corner. And we thought that we might, we might put heat in here, so we put the insulation in. Oh, another good point. We didn't put insulation under the pad. No. Uh, although that is something you would definitely want to do if you were going to heat the building because yeah. the ground, the heat from the ground or the cold from the ground will just suck, suck your heat right out of your building. Yeah. So what we wanted to do is make it easier to keep it at 40, you got 45 degrees, um, by using the heat from the ground. So we insulate anything that might touch yeah. uh, air 
and then the heat from the 45 degree heat from the ground will keep this pad at least warmer for a lot longer during the winter. Same thing. Some more draining. Yeah. So the drain, you saw that that black thing there. It was a pipe with holes. Yeah. So this yeah. is right. So, you can get one of these at you know your big box store, but yeah. it's you know four inch drainage pipe, uh, corrugated pipe with a uh, has a a poly sock. sleeve over it, a sock over it too, so that it keeps the dirt out. Yeah. Oh, we're kids. <laughs> the one. other two still. I think they're probably still. I think you're right. Still away. So he's had one we had to contend with. So he's helping clean, fill in that, fill in that uh, right over the the drainage sock there. Yes, yes, he's doing it. Yes, that was very good. That's a job that a child can do. They can rake dirt. Right. So this is another lesson learned. This was a mistake. Uh, I should have yeah. done something here to to so that I drain better. Because what I did is I ended up putting four inch gravel right on top of this and then we put reclaim right on top of that and it made this basically completely like waterproof and so like huh. any water that's like over here will actually go right inside the garage because you cannot get to this drain so I don't know what the solution is there maybe sand or uh, a grating or something yeah that great we actually... talk about the grating that'll be a project yeah. for I don't know maybe the summer I don't know yeah something that, that drains well so yeah until then it. when it snows it's just important to clear it the other thing that you can do is just have a really healthy pitch coming away here right from from the from your doors yeah we didn't have that scenario we actually it's actually about level of the driveway actually i think it's a little low in the driveway yeah but um no all right so here we are we're all set with sheathing all the way around drainage in insulation around just the front and you can see we still have the forms around the um, foundation. Yep, there's no reason for that whatsoever. Yep. Ah, Tyvek. That was next. Is the yep. what do you call that? Vapor barrier? No, what do you call yeah, it? Yeah, it's a vapor, yeah, barrier, it's like a vapor sure. barrier. That wasn't that hard to do. It came in a sheet of four feet long, maybe. Yeah, this was an upgrade. They gave us um, a vapor oh, yeah. barrier that wasn't Tyvek, yeah. and I don't know if I'm just a Tyvek snob or if I just I didn't like the texture of it, so I. I we upgraded that's why it felt actually, funny. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it didn't feel, it just didn't feel right. It didn't, yeah. yeah I can't it remember was cheap. The, the, yeah, the name of it, but. So it was worth it just to upgrade. It couldn't have been that much more. Uh, I don't remember yeah, how much it was. It was like 10 or 20 bucks more to, to go up to the tie The tie bag. So it came in like four foot rolls. And is it four foot? I think it's like eight foot. No, because I could roll it. No, look, it's, we like, did layers. Like it's like eight foot tall. Look from here oh, to here. Oh, it was eight foot. Yeah, no, it's definitely it was, yeah. it's, it's long. It's like because I would roll it sure. as he would staple and roll and staple, and so I would have to go on the ladder and just roll it along. And he was it wasn't that bad to do, and then we just cut out the door. So this is where you were helping me find the studs. Oh, this might have been it. What, what, really what I had here I had these uh, nails that had the the plastic washers on it. Yeah. And that hold the Tyvek onto the onto the. I mean, you can staple it, but I didn't want to do that because it makes thousands of tiny little holes right you put so this barrier put, like, up exactly why put up a why paper put barrier, barrier and put a bunch of holes, holes, in holes in it yeah so yeah so these nails had these these like plastic washers yeah and you were kind of like helping me find the stud so the i could nail into a nail yeah. into a stud which may not have been necessary strictly but we definitely did that so if you look yeah and actually the tyvek actually has like markings on it so you can see like every it does. Six it has little dots. Or two feet. So once you find one, you can kind of usually find the next. Yeah. I mean, I guess you can line it up, but it's just, it's, it's way easier said than done. Yeah. It was easier for us just for me to be like, here, down this yeah. line is where the, the stud is. All right. Now, what's this? So at this point in time, there was a, um, this is our well. And is that just it has, the well pipe is going up this way towards the house. And we said, well, we need power from the house anyway. So yeah. while they had dug this trench for the well, we said, well, we're just going to dig a little bit further you know, around here. So there's a couple of different things you can do. Obviously, we use the backhoe to dig a trench. But um, in other other times, we had rented a, like a mini oh, excavator. Yeah. And we also rented a another tool that has like, a, it's like a giant chainsaw like, that goes into the like ground. It's a trencher. Just, yeah, it's a trencher. A trencher. It cuts a, like a four inch wide trench. And uh, you can uh, drop, you know, you can just drop underground cable in here. Uh, we actually put in um, conduit and then pulled the wire later on. Yeah. Yep. So that was that. Yep. With, this is Charles and I. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Putting in the uh, putting in the conduit. Yep. That was. I'm trying to think. Yeah, that was just for right, just for the power during that. Water. Yeah, and here at the end. So this is like something that I know not everyone uses, but I think it's yeah. crazy. But this is like a uh, like a frost extender it's like a, this is like right. a telescopic sleeve so because this thing is a built on top of the ground it could it could heave and you don't want to be breaking off your cables and stuff but also you don't want to be breaking your your pipe 
Right. So this thing kind of like expands and shrinks a little bit. And you definitely want to put a little bit of give in your, your wire too. I mean, it might move, move up by, you know, fractions of an inch, but it, it hasn't appreciably moved yeah. at all. So there it is. So that's the conduit that we ran the, the line through. Yep. And it looks like snow over here, but this it's is actually not. leftover clay. clay from the well that they dug out of the well. Yeah, they had dug that well like two days before. Yep. And it just sprayed all over. <laughs> it did. Um, oh, that's, oh, good. So you can see in this picture the, see that second building up there? That's actually another three-car garage that we actually converted into a house for the time being and so you'll we have a lot more videos on that yep. um but that's what we were talking about like the other building that was coming up yeah normally you want to lay this conduit kind of straight but if you know if you obviously this isn't straight goes all over the place it has a lot of flex in it i mean I if did. you're dealing with like four inch con uh four inch conduit forget it no but, flex um, no but, but this, this two, two inch, inch conduit yeah and actually um there's different rules about how big conduit you're supposed to have depending on what oh yeah you can check you your own there. codes too about what they say for how much you need but for for, for our purposes here where we live yeah so we put in two gauge two wire yep. uh for 100 amp service actually it's 90 amp service um 220 221 for, <laughs> for the yeah for the two gauge wire we yep. use two inch pipe yeah that's that super flexy yeah you can definitely yeah, you can see, see the uh the well, the well but we had to well work around where they had dug for the well right i wasn't going to redig. and they just did spot. direct later they just dumped underground wiring just right on the ground and you can do that too yeah. i mean the only i'm not sure if, if there's any real reason not to just throw the wire in but if you ever want to access it your your, your hose yeah that's true nope yep so this bend. is just a, a little yeah the bend to the top so going around these these corners uh, you can get like some wide, some wide turns. I mean, this is like a really narrow turn here, but if you have a bigger size pipe, you'll actually have like a super wide mm -hmm. turn here. And sometimes, depending on your local uh, regulations, there you have to be metal, metal bends. Oh yeah. Uh, but this is this is just uh, you know, it's not, not required here. Yep. Because it's not this is a secondary service. Oh, what's this? So this is just uh, this is the the uh, the panel that we used out in the garage. So you can see here it says main lugs only, which basically means it doesn't have a main circuit breaker on it so the main circuit breaker for this particular panel comes from oh it's on that beige building so the beige the building, building has yeah. the main circuit breaker and all that stuff but this right. was like a secondary so you didn't have to have that yeah i might went overboard a little bit with the 50 space listen this guy <laughs> has like six cars around, so i mean overboard is relative <laughs> might have gone overboard i always tell them but it's better to go overboard than to um get something that can't handle what you need sure, to yeah. so I mean, it's it i think 100 amp for a garage is pretty pretty solid yeah so we went with 25. uh actually this uh home line series is actually a pretty good series they have a couple of features which i really like like um your circuit breakers have a, they have a kind of expensive like 50 dollars circuit breakers but they um they have the arc fault and ground fault built into it so you don't have to put in uh ground fault outlets around the house if you don't, if you don't oh yeah to. And it has the arc fault built into it auto automatically, so you just plug the thing on. You don't have to do any special wiring or anything. Yeah, so this is that panel, and you can see, you can see here. There's one arc fault circuit. This is an arc fault ground fault circuit, and you just clip this guy on, and then it grounds itself to this uh, to this bus. Hmm. So you don't have to do like a special, you know, pigtail grounding there. So this was a mistake. This is okay? a big mistake. Mistake time, mistake yeah. time, do mistake time. So we put in the like, we. But there's a reason. There was a whole, the trusses got held up. So, so the trusses had to be on order. So like, yeah. you know, we ordered the package from the lumber yard. They gave us all, you know, the framing and every, every so often we need something, the sheathing would come. But the trusses, I don't know if they forgot to order them or what, yeah, or they were right. back ordered. Yeah. But they took at least an extra six weeks. Yeah, maybe. it was actually a long time. So we had all this time on our hands where we had nothing to do, be, but because we couldn't put the roof on, so we decided to go ahead and well, try to do some electrical system. work. You know. Okay, so immediately after putting this in, we said, you know, that's well, that a really a bad idea because it has that's not a roof. So the electrical, these wires and stuff have like paper inside them, and obviously this is, you know. It's not a sense of electronics, but I mean, you don't want the thing to get wet. No. So immediately after put these in, we're just like, well, that was dumb. And we took this, this plastic sheathing, kind of just laid this plastic over here and put plastic around the entire inside of the garage so that none of the electrical So the outlets get didn't get wet yeah. and all this stuff. But remember, we didn't have power yet right. to 
our house site at all. So at least nothing was powered. Yeah. But we didn't have power. <laughs> but yeah, that was a mistake. I'm sure there'll be more pictures of that. So the Tyvek. Oh, the windows. This is window installation. Yep. So this, I didn't really like putting in windows either. So this is some special tape you get. I think it's called Pella is the Pella brand. Tape, so we got some yeah. Pella tape here. And basically you, you wrap your Tyvek inside the building there after you cut open a, you know, a hole in it. And then you can basically wrap this tape around the, all the, the entire uh, outline of the window or where it's going to sit and it makes a really good solid seal yeah. here. Oh, and here's another thing not to do. So this window right here does not close correctly and I'll oh. tell you why. When I put this thing in, you, na you nail along the periphery to put this window in. Yeah. And when I put it in, you're kind of like, you're trying to hold, you're trying to shim it from the inside the and shims. nail it from the outside. So when I was dealing with this, I had the window open. So when I started nailing it, it was slightly askew yeah, right. and then when you try to lower the window down it doesn't seat exactly perfectly because right. it actually says right on this this piece of paper right here it says close the window close before the window. installation but we chose on that one not to we were just kind of gambling yeah we're, we we're kind of wondering what would happen did not read the directions no we didn't read directions on that one i didn't like windows because i didn't like doing the shimming yeah, shimming sucks. I didn't like the shimming. I mean, it's not hard. It's just something. It's like I you have to figure out exactly where to put it. Spatial and, relations, like yeah. it just—I couldn't do it right, and obviously I didn't. So. And anything moves, the shims fall out, and that's yeah, the and then they go flying, and yeah. then they drop, and you try and hold the other ones in. I didn't like shimming at all. We needed way more shims for this entire project yeah. than we have. We bought like one pack of shims. I think we needed Invest like six. Invest shims. <laughs> yeah, shims. They're super cheap. Buy shims. You're gonna use them in different types. The long ones, the short yeah, ones. Yeah, we got yeah, thin ones. Like, ones, yeah, lots, ones, of lots of shims. Lots of shims. All right, what is this? Siding. Oh, where the kids? Where are the kids? So we got the kid, the two little ones, back. So, so this one's helping me put up siding. Yep, this is the youngest one. He's helping. Holding measuring tape. Yep. yep. Yep, so we'd measure it, and then... Oh, this here's the other kid. The table, yep. Here's the other kid. This time he built the table. Yeah. Very proud. Scrap table. Very proud. And you can see the plastic sheeting yep. um, underneath, over the um, uh, wall there. And hey, oh, oh this kid is still plotting. He's still plotting. He's yeah. not really certain what's what, what to do. Yeah, poor kiddo. Great. So here we are. This is Alex helping me this out. This is Alex helping. You can come over, Alex, and say hi in the middle. So this is. Hi. Need to come over here behind. Yeah. Oh mercy. Here, here? here he is. Oh. Here he is. This is Alex. Here I am. Here he is. So hi. he helped us do. Make look you're holding something up. Yeah, pretend like you're working. Now let's replicate this scene. Right? Yeah. Here oh, we go. Okay. Oh, okay. You're over here. Oh, oh, yeah. is, oh, is it over here? Yeah, you're there. No, no. Yeah. No, good. No. No. Good. Yes. Oh, oh, there. No. We're doing good. So the no, neat thing here. about siding is it's super light. So you can have kids or weak people with maybe sore shoulders help with siding because it's really lightweight work and it's it doesn't take a lot of um like some of the like putting up the sheathing is really heavy work. Putting up the headers was very heavy. It was like a lot of muscle work. They had you had to go into it. This this screening and all that stuff. But this is really kind of easy to do. Yeah, it's they're 12 feet long, so they're really inconvenient to manage by yourself. Oh, they're wobbly. Because generally, like, if you're doing it by yourself, you're going to have to put a nail in the middle and then kind of work your way to one side and nine, and hopefully you get the end lined up. And Yeah. It's a lot way easier if you if you have a helper for this one, even yeah. if he's eight. Yeah, it doesn't matter how old they are. They help. Great. Hey, proud of our work. Working hard. What Working hard. I'm proud of our work. It looks like a MAGA hat, but it's not. No. St. Louis Cardinals. St. Louis guys. Cardinals. St. Louis. Yeah, it's a St. Louis Cardinals hat. And yeah, so as obviously as you get higher up on the side, it does get more difficult to do, um, but mostly because the ground around the workshop wasn't very level. Yes. Yeah, if so you have level ground, oh yeah, that would be help. a lot easier. The other thing is that normally you wouldn't do the siding this early. I don't think. No, I think you put on the roof uh -huh. first, but we didn't have we didn't roof have... to put up, so there was no roof. So we had it. So we, we were, we were trying of... to keep moving. Yeah. While we had good weather, and and we just didn't want to stop and do nothing. Yep. Yeah, we live in the Northeast, so bad weather is completely, well, a complete reality. You know, reality. the warm weather is a short, a short window, yep. and we wanted to get everything done that we could. So it's the back. Yep. Look, it looks so nice. Look at that. It, it looks, looks like so we're, nice. We're like you're making felt, something. Yeah, it, it did feel good when it. Again, I thought. We're almost done. The siding's on. <laughs> we have half a building. We're almost done. <laughs> the bottom half. <laughs> Yay. Not really. Uh, oh, we got a door. There's the door. So the yep. door was installed there. That's great. More siding. And... Oh, goodness what's... gracious. Oh, yeah. So when they come to deliver the trusses, right? It comes on a giant truck. Yeah. And if you're... If you have a good location, you can get this giant truck into 
the where, property, like, where you need to put these trusses. Now, we don't have that situation. So th these trusses were like 700 feet that way. And not down our driveway. And, a roughed in driveway. Yeah. So they're not, they're not super heavy. They're like 150 pounds a piece. I mean, How many you were there? They were like uh, mm, 20 of them? 19. 19 of them. So at 150 pounds a piece, we did attempt to carry yeah, you one of the drive. I couldn't. I mean, you can totally do this. One guy can do this if he wants to, but I mean, like, it would suck. So, you could carry them one by one in this with case, two people. Sure, yeah. So we took uh, we took them, well, looks like we have like more pictures? five of them at yeah, a time. Tied and, up. And we tied it up onto the backhoe and kind of tracked the driveway. Yeah. So here's the stack. Well, these are the attic off. trusses. There they are. We're like, great. So yeah, we this is us picking up a whole stack of attic trusses. What do you call those things? Uh, straps. Yeah, you some like. Yeah, I think um, we choose ratchet straps. Ratchet or, straps. Yeah, ratchet straps. And just you know, put it on, and I would just give them the signal to keep lifting until it was off. Yep. Know. So it's like, are. oh, here's the other thing. You got to make sure that when you put these down, when you when you move them from one place to another. They'll just lay them down, but they're they're in order when you get oh, there. Oh, they they're were gonna be swinging. Numbered. Do you have the, you probably don't have a picture of them swinging. No, that's something else. Yeah. But um, but they're they're in order. So each one of these has like number like one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So when you blame when you bring from one place to the other, if you're not if you don't like do it correctly, if yeah. you have a stack like this and you move it and it's not like this, now all your trusses are are the wrong number, the wrong, wrong order. So you have to do it the so other way. So you kind of have or... to like move them so that like they end up back over here the same. So we were gonna start at this side of the building. I know. I we were going to, but we didn't. And then we did. We were starting this side. Yeah. And then went this way. So we wanted these guys, these uh, scissor trusses, which go over here to be on the bottom of the stack. So you can see we, we brought some of these over and, and kind of stacked them over here so we uh, yeah. so we could have them in the right order. There they are. One more. So there's huh. Linda busy at work. So yeah. these things were kind of swinging it all around swinging. the place. And so... <laughs> <laughs> Linda's the tail of the kite here. <laughs> I was. <laughs> Making the trusses not flop around the driveway. Yeah, I had to hold them steady. You're doing a great job. I, I did a good job. I did a good job. I put all my weight into Here's it. Here's Linda trying to move like a thousand pounds of wood. I did. I did. I'm pushing it. I'm so strong. <laughs> I'm so strong. <coughs> you know, people don't believe that we did this. Yeah. They're like, you guys didn't put those trusses in. I'm like, no, actually, we, 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 yeah, did. we did. We did. We did that. And that took us to move them. Probably about four hours. It was, was it probably that long? it was probably like yeah, it's probably from like four to eight. Yeah, it's maybe five time. to eight, maybe three or four hours just to get them up from down the driveway all the way up. Yeah, if you can get because you had to go really slow. If you can get that guy to put him in the right spot, you're way ahead of the curve. Yeah, but if not, oh well. Oh. So yeah, yes. so Linda found this picture. She says, "Oh, I found this thing that I think might help put up, put up uh, the, trusses, the trusses." Yeah. So generally, if you look online, everyone will say, oh yeah, you put the trusses on top of the, uh, the, the top plate there, upside down, and then you have like a giant stick and you push you it up. push it up. And I said, that sounds like such a bad idea. I know. I mean, like, it sounds great until like one falls on you. I know. I, you. Can you see one sliding off? I mean, or yeah. the other thing is to rent a crane. Oh yeah, right. You could rent a crane, but, but yeah, that wasn't something that we were gonna do. So Linda finds finds this thing. It was at the local rental store. It's made for lifting HVAC equipment up into the overhead. Yeah. And uh, I think it went up to like eighteen feet or something like that. Yeah, it was really tall. And I think it was like forty dollars to rent. So we're just like totally oh, okay. worth it. This it is so makes it so much worth easier. It. And we just we have pictures. Yeah, it was totally worth it. So here's the first one. So we just we it's had, like a forklift in the top. So this is an example. We had another guy come over to help. A friend yeah. of mine came over and we. Took, took one of these trusses and you kind of, we hang, hung it on these hooks here. And cranker, just, cranker. you just sit there and like, cranker, you know, cranker, 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 crank cranker. this thing up and then you, you know, a slight angle and then lift this thing up and you know, it's on wheels. You wheel this thing into place and drop the thing down and then just you nail them in. Yeah, the good thing is, is that it, it'll hold it while they're putting in the brackets and <clears throat> nailing it in, <clears throat> which was really good. I mean, how else do you hold it? Like, I don't, the, the stick method doesn't. Yeah, the stick method is a horrible the, idea. That seems like a bad idea. Oh, we rented that big ladder too. Rented a 16 foot ladder, uh, and you absolutely need yeah. a ladder that can get you up to the top because you'll be putting, you know, boards up in, you know, this uh, like to hold these things together. You've been nailing into this, yeah. And you absolutely need to be up there. So, um, yeah, that was important. Yeah. So the 16 foot ladder, I, that was just that wasn't too expensive. Yeah. Either. Rented that for just a couple of days. We just rented it for yeah, it was like two days or yep. whatever. It was fine. So. There we are. So we got the first one in. So the cranker crank is out of the way. So it's, I was. Yeah, I was you see over here, we have some two by fours, which we put up. So the first one's the most dangerous, okay? Yeah. So when you're putting this thing up in, there's nothing, when are putting this in, it, there's nothing to hold it in place. So we had these two by fours up, screwed into the back of the, uh, the building. 
So when we put this thing up, we just kind of like lean it up against these two by fours so that it would stay there while we're while we're going and getting the next guy. Because after these things are all in place, they kind of hold each other Yeah, they hold each other together. together. It's just but this first one is like super sketch. And you can see over here, we'll see in lo later pitches, we had some hurricane brackets we just made to hold these things at exactly the right size, yeah. uh, right location. And then offset here by like every two feet, like putting on a hurricane bracket and just yep. lower the trusses right into it. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So you can see the reinforcement yep. bar right there that they put in. So you can also see here the second truss is up, yep. and um, the way that we did this, we had basically two guys working on it. I was down cutting sections of two by four. Mm -hmm. So in order to get these exactly lined up, like two feet on center, we cut like two two foot sections of two by four, and then we actually put like another like two inch piece of two by four mm -hmm. on the end. So when you go up here, you just kind of like hook this over on like one of the things put a couple of nails in it and then line it up on the you know two feet marker and then the guy up on the top of the ladder doesn't need to have a ruler right doesn't have anything. bring up a measuring yeah. tape anything he just has like it's almost yeah. like a jig I yeah guess. it's like a it's jig, like a jig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so you can see it later on these uh well, yeah i thought it was pretty slick it was like 27 inch two by four with a two by four, with the two on, by four the on the end yeah and that would space them exactly correctly all right so now we get about i don't know six of them up there maybe five yeah, it looks of them, like five. Know, five of them up and yeah Yep, they one at a time. One at a time. One at a time. Really happy to have Jim's friend there. Yep. Go on the high ladder. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, my God, get ladder. up there. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But we definitely, you did, you did need, we did need the extra hand, though, to do this. If yeah, it was the two it, of it us alone on this one, it, it, we could have done I it. I think we could have done it. But, it, but it, it's way easier. It was way easier. To get some extra help to put up this stuff. Because they're just so inconvenient to yeah. move around. Yeah, three people, definitely. And you get tired after, after you do five, like, whoo, you know? And we did this all in one day, too. So here's a couple of different things. So here you can see those 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 two by fours. We kind of put these one, and this is what's setting the spacing here. And then after you get a whole bunch of these in a row, you're gonna to want to put in like these diagonal cross braces to make sure that the whole thing doesn't kind of like do this on you. Right. And you can see these uh, the two by fours back over here on the back side. So that's kind of spacing on the back side right. to make sure that like. It's, so space is on both sides, yeah. and then diagonals to kind of keep it strength to strengthen yeah. it. I don't know if any, everyone would do this, but we found it super easy to use those. Yeah. Oh, they're really coming along now. Yep. Yeah. Moving and grooving. Uh, yep. Yeah. So the same going. thing. So you can at least see the reinforcements. You get the scissor trusses in. Almost done. So when you buy these trusses, it comes with this entire stack of, yeah. info of like installation information. It tells you all the different strengtheners that you have to use. Right. So, I mean, it'll probably tell you exactly what you need, but basically the long story short is that you need to protect this from moving in like any possible direction. direction. Yeah. So you're supposed to put like two by fours down this way, and then you're supposed to put two by fours in this plane, and then there's two by fours in like this plane. It's like, there's, and they, they're all like crisscross and diagonal and stuff. So and they, they show you how to, how to do that in the plans usually, but That's it's, right. it's a lot It's a lot of we extra material. We didn't even put them all in immediately. Right, we put them in afterwards. Yeah. Uh, but it's a, it's a lot of extra materials that that is not it's not evident that you're gonna need when you when you start doing that's, it. Yeah, that's true. We're, we're lucky we just had a lot of wood hanging around yeah. from the building that we were working on. So just about that. That's the last one. I one's think that's up. it. Yeah. That's so it. if you so look at this up. last one, this last one actually looks a little different. In this one, I kind of feel should the first one should have looked different, but it, it didn't. didn't. And normally on the on the gable, what you'll have so this scissor trusses have a certain you know crisscross design. This last one is actually 16 inches on center. So that you can put insulation into it. Right. So they yeah, they, they made a nice uh, that was kind of a useful. You know, we didn't have to ask for that. That just yeah, they, they just, just to automatically us. did so. That was a good thing. All right. So where so this are we is the here? other building. So this is an important detail. So when they were putting up this other building, they 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 sheathed this entire wall, and then afterwards, as like a access no, accent accent, they put in this decorative this ladder. It was basically like a ladder. Yeah. Let's go to the next slide. So the eave is basically is just a two by four and a two by four and like all these cross pieces. So it looks like a ladder and just nailed this thing right onto the side of the building, and um, I think it adds uh, some some good protection to the end the energy of the building on the gables oh, yeah, to keep to like, keep uh, snow off, to keep water off, the the siding and stuff like that. Yeah. Great idea. So I think we, uh, we so we that? decided to put that on the other building. We did not yet. Yeah. So here's right here. Oh, so it you is. can there see. Oh, there it is. There's a ladder. You can see. So this was not fun. This was. 
this definitely took some effort. So you can see we're kind of like hoisting this thing up. Using ratchet straps. Ratchet I couldn't, straps. I couldn't, I couldn't hold thing it. Tied over here and then we're trying to lift this up and ratchet strap. It was a disaster. We didn't want it to fall on us. Yeah. You know, and my arms couldn't hold it up. And at this point too, we had rented um, scaffolding. I don't know if you can see it. You can probably point it. Yeah, we bought a couple of me. different uh, levels of scaffolding. We bought three levels of scaffolding. Yeah. And if you buy three so. levels, you get six Two uprights. Okay. And then we bought some extra scissor uh, crosses here. Yeah. And um, scaffolding was a huge help. Yeah, they're not that expensive. I think no, it was a couple. Oh, sorry. I I was, a, yeah, you can see the scaffolding a little bit better here. I think it was a few hundred bucks. And the thing is, if you have like these three layers, like this is only three levels of scaffolding. It looks like four, but it's only three because there's one here, yeah. one here, and one up here. And then you have an extra scissor in the middle. Um, so so those three levels, we actually rented the, the planks. The planks are actually pretty expensive, but the, the scaffolding yeah, itself, the itself is we just really, purchased really those. Really actually pretty cheap. Yeah. But you can rent those for even cheaper. Yeah, you can rent them for sure. But that was a big help to to move to scaffolding instead of moving ladders everywhere. Sure, yeah. And that gives us access to the peak over here. So mm -hmm. when after we were up here putting in those eaves, end up nailing those eaves into the uh, that first truss. Yeah. And, uh, you know, load, putting the soffits up in there. Right. I guess it's not a soffit, it's an eave. You can see the eave thing yep. better here. Yeah. And then we even put ladders on top of scaffolding. That's <laughs> safety first uh, in our house. Safety first, always. All right. Yeah, it looks so... like we finished that side. So another another thing here. It's like why are we finishing the siding when we don't have a roof yet. Yep. And the answer is we were my dad was coming up to help us put up the put up right. the roof. Yes. So um so we started working on other stuff that seemed incidental. And this is kind of like a weird thing, you know. Yeah. It doesn't even seem that strange to us, but yep. like. We did the electrical kind of like phase, and we did the siding phase, and we did the roof phase. It's like when you're when you hire someone to build this stuff, they'll do it very oh, sequentially. Well, do it. And, yeah, exactly. Everything they won't put electrical in until you have a roof on, and they right. won't. But it also pushes things back. If you have to wait six weeks for a roof, yeah, then your whole build is pulled off six weeks because they're not going to do anything extra. Yeah. You know, but we we did try to just do as much as we could on the weekends that we could, knowing that his dad was going to come up. And help with the roof, yep. so that weekend was okay. Well, we'll do what we yeah, can. No, no judging, no judging about no. doing stuff out of sequence. No, that's what, that's what we did. So here we are. What are we looking at? Why, why did you do this? Why did you choose it's this? It's a picture? lovely picture. Oh, it was safety. He was showing safety. We often wore hard hats. We did occasionally when you're lifting these things and cutting and 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 need air protection. Was that what this was for? The safety. Yes, we need Mr. Safety. T to do our. Public service. We do safety. Oh, yeah, safety gear. Safety gear. Always safety gear. We should do a whole video on all the safety gear. That Absolutely, we, yes. we will. We'll do it. We'll have to find Mr. T. On all the safety gear. Mm -hmm. So we moved the scaffolding to oh, the far yeah. side, the other side to put up the. Uh, so obviously we put up the sheathing here, which we didn't have. Right. Last time we looked, and then we put up these these two eaves. Eaves. I didn't like eaves. So. Oh yeah. So here's okay. another thing. So the next step is putting up sheathing on the roof. Don't be a hater. We use. <laughs> it is You heavy. can do this one at a time. You can if you're strong enough to carry up a four by eight. But How, we're, what we're is this two levels three high here. This, this is five eighths. Five eighths. Yeah. Okay. This is thick and heavy. Yeah, I can't move one by speed. myself. You can move one by yourself. Yeah, it's uh, you, but you, you can't have to move. Like, stage it onto this piece of staging, and then you have to yeah. climb up there, and you have to like load Hold it up on this stage, and then you can do it one at a time, but. But if you have a backhoe, you, have a backhoe, you can put a whole stack of them. easier. Yeah, in the backhoe and have it. It's like an elevator and have it, you know, raise it up. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure there are other ways to get it, to get them. I don't know, but that's, that's how we lift did them. it. If you have lift a two-guy two team and one guy's oh, pushing, one guy's pulling, and at the same time it, it'd help, but yeah. we didn't. We just went the easy way here and threw them on the uh, the bucket and just kind of lift yeah. them up to the top. Save our shoulders. Yep. All right, so this is my dad and I were putting on the fascias. So oh, yeah. the fascias, this board here. There is so many parts to building a house that I had no idea about. I'm like, oh, you put up the, 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 the walls and you put up a roof. Yeah. I had no idea that the eaves, the fascia, all this stuff, all this the extra stuff. It's strictly necessary, no, but it's a but, nice feature. It makes it look nice. And, no, uh, but still, you have it, all these things. Some, some protection from the weather. That I, I, I didn't even think about it. I just thought, oh, yeah, I was put some roof, you know. So the catch here is like when you, when you look at this roof coming down at this angle here, you want to keep the fascia so that it's, it's not above the uh basically where your roof is going to come down and hit here and um you'll see in some later pictures we use some some metal some drip edge to kind of wrap oh, yeah. wrap the fascia so that it right. uh, the water oh that's not yet yeah, you won't see that yet yep. yeah 
So this is putting the sheathing up on the rope yep, again. Yep, this is putting the sheathing on the back. Jim's dad and Jim together doing that. I would hand, so the good thing is too, actually having three people for this job is, is good because I was able to always give them the extra supplies. Yeah, you need yeah. more your nails, you know, I could do the refills without them having to get up and down all the time. Yeah, you're already going to go up and down the scaffolding like a thousand times. A thousand times. times. And if you don't have someone down to get your stuff, it's like 5,000 times. Yeah, so. So that's really how I helped when Jim's dad was around. I was like the helper aider handing things, which was a good relief for me because my arms were getting really tired and I had a, my shoulder hurt and it was nice to have, it was nice to have the help when we had it. Oh, it looks so nice. Yep. So here you can see the, uh, the scissor, the scissor, uh, the scissor trusses and you see over here in the attic trusses on the far side. Yep. And we, you know, did, we have a weird blue. Piece it of, was blue. I don't know. The sheeting just came sheeting. like painted blue. Whatever. It looks a little yep. strange. So it looks like we finished the back of the no big deal. Back of the garage in, the, in this photo. Yep. And then obviously the next thing would be oh you can see the oh, uh, some of the strengtheners. Sorry. Too fast. Too I was fast. too fast. Let's go back. You can see here one of the strengths we put in like right here. Oh yes, yes. So that went all along the um, center. But yeah, all down the, the scissor trusses there, kind of hold them in. And actually, what we ended up doing uh, in order to strengthen like this is like every two feet, I think we have another another board going all the way down here going across you know Don't across lie. the same way as this way yeah yeah so yeah so that that whole side she thinks just about yep. done that was a day yeah that was, that was a probably a day. day that was a solid day doing doing that and then you had to get the front done yep and it was a solid day to do the front too it's definitely a solid day doing the front yeah so you get the scaffolding the two guys i was handing them stuff yeah so the part that you don't that you don't see here is that i want you to go back one sure Ding. The part that you don't that you don't see is um, after you get up like one of these layers, you have to crawl up onto the roof to oh, do yeah. the next layer. So there's brackets you can get that kind of like you you nail into this thing here, and then yeah. you, you put a two by uh, a, you know two by across here. So you're standing on a platform here while you like load the next level of a uh, plywood up on top, yeah. and you have to you know put those things on, and then after you do that one, you have to like kind of work your way up, and it's. Uh, you know, in this particular type of roof, this is a, an 8-12 pitch roof. It's mm -hmm. it's not steep enough where you're gonna fall off of it because it's so steep. I mean, it's not that's not it's you not that's not steep, but it, you can stand on you it. You could right? totally fall off this roof. <laughs> no one fell off this roof. Nobody fell yes. off it, but you could. You could totally fall off this roof. I'm sure you can fall off anything. I mean, I could fall off this chair, but <laughs> you could totally fall off the roof. Sorry, my oh my bad. God. I mean, it wasn't stu It wasn't like crazy steep. Because there's a house down the road that's got like a really steep roof. Right, yeah. It's got, like, I mean, it's like a, it's at least a 12. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's wicked steep. So sure, it wasn't super, but yes, no, but it was scary to have them, you know, have them go all the way up. Um, yeah, it wears on your you, feet too, like keeping your yeah. foot on this thing all the time. It just chafes your foot. Yeah. So yeah. wear some good footwear, something with a good, a good patch on the bottom. I was or even those, boots. um, you, yeah, he was wearing his hiking boots. So they, well, I, I guess I could kind of, maybe construction, construction was used to have a lot of padding on them. He had hiking boots and I think we yeah. put in a Dr. Scholl's, um, like air pillow. Desperate times. Desperate, you have to, you do what you got to do. I mean, your feet, you're on your feet all day doing this stuff. So you can see the scaffolding is up here now. So we're just rotating around the building with the scaffolding. Yeah. The other thing is that on some of these, if you look on some of these feet, I think I got four jacks. Yes. So at least four of these legs have have different levels, and then the other ones are either shinned with two by fours or something because the rocks. jacks are kind of expensive too. Rocks. Yeah, right. We would use you use whatever you can find yeah. to um, to shim things up. Yep. Yeah. What's next? Okay. So the sheathing's on. Yep. And then this is the ice in water barrier thing. Yep. Gray ice and water. This is really here. sticky. This, this is the sticky stuff. Yeah. There's a couple of, actually, this one was surprisingly not sticky. There's a couple of different versions of ice and water shield. Yeah. One is like wicked sticky. Yeah. Like you put it down and it's like, it's not coming up. And then this stuff was actually surprisingly not sticky. It was yeah. like, Oh, I think of the window stuff. The Pella stuff was really sticky. Yeah, that was. Yeah. yeah. Was well, I remember one of these was really sticky and one wasn't, but yeah. you gotta be careful of that. I think the, we ended up using the grace. I, I think I didn't really like it cause it was, um, it would definitely peel up. Yeah. Like yeah, it didn't give you a really good feeling like it was really stuck on there. Yeah. So we put grease and ice and water on the lower third, uh, three feet, not third, three feet, and then yeah. we just have uh just tar paper up on the rest of the way here. And this tar paper is just stapled in with a typical stapler. Yeah. And that yellow rope is a um like a safety line. Yeah, we have a, a fall a fall uh 
So they had huge, did you have a picture behind us? Yeah, actually, okay. I, nah, maybe not. I don't mm-hmm. know. So we, we had this harness that I made him get because I was like, you're working on a roof. Like, see, if you're not afraid, you going to fall off. I was like, no, yep. you, you're going to put a harness on. Cause I didn't like the way it looked from where I was standing. There's a picture of the, uh, the, the mountain point in the top. Okay. Right we'll, we'll get to that when we see that. So, so we this crazy right picture is us pulling the, the wire. Wire. Were we were pulling? Yeah, so the, the, the trench comes up through here. Oh, and back to electrical. The trench comes like, up over here. We don't do anything in order. And then, yeah, so back to the electrical. Back to electrical today. Yeah, so. And then this wire is like kind of like sitting oh, here on yeah. a spool. That's rope. No, this is wire. That's this rope. is rope and this is wire. Oh. That's oh, wire. I see it. I see the and yellow so is rope. My dad was feeding the wire down here. And I was lubricating it. So I would have yeah. this big vat of like goo. Yeah. And I had a like, as he was feeding it, I was lubricating it. And I was on the yeah. other side over here like pulling this wire up like this up on the yeah. other side of the, the conduit. Yeah. And actually, pulling wire through cotton, we've done a lot of that, and it actually, it's not, it's not that hard. No. I mean, having 90s in there is not great. I mean, if you can go straight, it's better, but, yeah. we, but we've we, done it. we went through, you got to consider there's like a 90, there's like a 45 here, a 45 here, it does that S-turn thing here, and then a 90 over here, and then another 90, and we were just we were pulling that through. Pull it through. Yeah. We buy lubricant. You actually buy that lubricant right at your big box store or your yeah. uh, electrical place. Yeah, I forget right. what type it was called, actually. I don't know if I have a picture of it. But it was just gooey, Vaseline-y. Yeah, it's goopy. Goopy. It was gross. But it was, his dad was all like, put more all over here. And I had to like constantly, like, put, I thought it was enough, but it was never enough. So I always had to put more on. Your dad really, really he wanted me stuff. to like, <laughs> you know, I'm like, I don't know. We only have three bottles of it, you know, like, hold on. But yeah. So that's that. Where are we here? Oh, yeah, so we the, rest of the tie. Tie Yep. So we ran out of Tyvek. You can see we took the ends. So I think it was, we had 10 foot tie back, I'm guessing, is what happened here. We, yeah. we did up to eight feet or something like that. Yeah. And then we had all these like two foot sections. Yeah, it was pieces. So then we took like two foot sections, we ran out of tie back. So a roll or whatever it was, or two rolls that we had wasn't enough. And we kind of had to tape together the rest of it. But we'll do that or buy a whole new roll of tie back yeah, and no yeah. use for, for the, the rest of it. it. I think it's a couple hundred bucks So yeah. for the whole roll. So we just piecemealed what we had and we were able to finish it. Yeah, it was fine. It was fine. Oh, look, it arrived. Hey, the, sh- the roofing of the, uh, the metal roof arrived. Yes, this is the metal roof. Yeah, so this was... is from... Um, Again, it was part of the kit. It's part of you the choose kit. choose your color. So this comes right from Maine, and uh, I think it's Everlast is the brand. Yes, Everlast, the, I think. Yeah, Everlast Roofing. They actually cut it to length for you, and uh, when they, sh- they they shipped it, oh, obviously, I didn't it that. came in here, we didn't have to cut we didn't. I didn't anything. even think of that. We didn't cut anything. It was like it fit just perfect. So the first one we put up, we, we that was fun. Kind of put it up there, and then the the uh, screws in this particular this is the model where you put the screws through like every like few feet, yeah, in like every other rib or something. <coughs> and um, we went up and used these self tapping screws that kind of screwed this in, but it was really really painful to do when you're standing up on the roof and you're trying to balance and you know put some pressure on this and and not fall off and whatever. Um, so what we ended up doing was we had one guy down on the ground drilling. We measured it I out didn't once, drill anything. drilled the holes in one sheet, just one sheet. Yes. And then uh, we tried to drill through all of them, and no. the sheets actually they start separating like this, and like it, we broke like three or four bits before we decided that, that was really that was bad, a bad idea. idea. So uh, we just drill, had one one sheet that was like a pattern, yep. and then drill through to the next sheet, and then take this one sheet and put it up on the roof, and then use that next guys a pattern to drill yep. the holes into the next sheet and on and on and on so we had the holes pre pre-drilled so right. it makes so you said to drill into the sheathing not right it's way way easier off the guy up on the, up on the roof to just put put it through a hole that's already there because he doesn't have yeah. to measure anything so there was a guy on the ground drilling, drilling holes. holes yeah and then there was a guy in the just roof passing up to the guy on the roof to i was to passing yeah, yeah i didn't do any of the drilling but i was the passer so you were two guys yep because two you were now. the driller and you were the Roofer put her on her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was a passer. That was really exciting the first time we did yes, that. Yes. That was like after work one day, and we were like, let's put up one. We put up a sheet. We put up like, a sheet. Are we done? Like, we did it. Yeah, we put up one sheet, and then we, <laughs> then we left. Yeah, that was, <laughs> and then we went home. We put one just to see if we could do it. So you, you can know? see that fall thing here, and up at the top, yes. there's a. And yeah, I think I, I got this on Amazon. It's actually yeah. it's pretty slick setup. It's just a metal bar I guess or metal plate and uh, with holes in it and then on the end it has two D-rings mm-hmm. and this thing kind of goes right over the, the, the ridge 
Yeah, it's like and a you kind of nail it on degree. this side, like you nail a... it on this side like this, and so yeah. like that metal thing, and then the D rings go on the end. You just clip your fall your your restraint on there right on the end, and we actually <clears throat> built it right into the building. So these so little D rings are sitting up there. You can't even see them. They're you so can't tiny. see them. But uh, anytime I want to go up on the roof, there's going to be you know a, safety a, a, the safety harness. Uh, yeah. The latch. Yeah, and so when he was on the safety harness, I had to sometimes I had to hold the wire, <clears> give him more <throat> slack, and that was really fun. Yeah, yeah. The problem with this harness is that when you're when you're going down, you can kind of release it and walk down. But when you're trying to walk back up, <coughs> you can't you can't do it because the loose end keeps coming up. Yeah, so, so I you're like, someone hold my tail. So I had to hold the tail. So you have to hold your tail when you're walking. You up can't pull too hard because you can't. Or you're, you're trying to pull and push at the same time. It took a little <laughs> time to figure out what the exact like pulling pressure I could do. <laughs> Don't pull me off. The I roof. was. It was like mm, you know I could see him lose his balance. I pretend it wasn't me. You know. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you know, I must have slipped. Oh, yeah, there's a D ring. So that's that ring. There yeah. it is. Yeah, so you can't even see it. So it just it's, fit right under the ridge vent there. and It's perfect. And it, it's Safety. permanantly in there, and it's fine. We put some, um, some it's not silicone. No, it's, it's that uh, black, um, it's a black tar. black roofing tar. Black roofing yeah. tar. Yeah. Along it. See him working up there? Yep. This is what I'm talking about. This is why we've got to have a harness. He's all like, no. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yes. So, him in the harness, working on the roof. Yep. Working up there Looking again. Good. Looking good. Finishing the roof. And I will say that didn't take... Whoops. Hey! Oh, what's going on like here? A, a three-second video. It's like a three-second video here. Hold on. I'll probably, you'll probably get dizzy, so I'll, I'll this, go to the next one. Well, the, well before stop? we go to the next one, you can look here. This is the driveway. You can see the driveway. This is like the quality of our driveway at this point. This is four-inch gravel. Yeah. What four-inch gravel driveway looks like. You know, you drive up and down, and it kind of gets torn up and stuff like that. Yeah. So go to the next one. Yeah, I'll go to the next one. <clears> that's like dizzying. So this Ooh. is where we lay down the reclaim. So reclaim is that's right. Kind of like a mix of I don't want to say like asphalt, Isn't reclaim it, the it asphalt is. from the highways like, and stuff like, like that, mixed with gravel, and uh, it compacts yeah. really, really well, and uh, it makes a really good surface. So you can see here that it's, nice. it's a really, really clean surface compared to the, the four inch gravel. Yeah. And it spreads really, really easily, it <clears throat> and it compacts really, really well. Yeah. Yeah, it's see. definitely the way to go. I really it like is reclaim. effectively waterproof. So. Well, and we talked about, um, what do you call it, uh, <coughs> paving. Oh, I mean, the we're in the middle of the woods. I mean, you know, we're in the middle of the woods. On and a dirt road. Yeah, on a dirt road. <clears throat> so, like, paving your driveway, like, I don't think so. But the reclaim worked really well. It's, it's almost as hard as... Um, What's this mouse? Oh, sorry. Like, sorry. Sorry. I, I, let go of, <clears throat> I let go of the mouse. Um, but the reclaim is almost as hard packed as... In oh some yeah, spots. it's hard. Yeah, yeah and it's actually, great. it's even better because you can actually take it back up again. If you get like a pothole or if it yep. comes uneven or something, you can just <coughs> hit yeah, it again. You if can... you have a obviously the bulldozer, but if you have a, you uh, a, a tractor with uh, one of the blades on the back, mm -hmm. you can just or you just need to shovel in a yeah, pothole. Sure, yeah. You can totally do that. It's and not it packs really really well. Yeah, but... so that was actually really good. So what's, so what's, what's all this in the? Here, what's like all have, in that? What's, we, what's... So this is all the installation for the. Actually, I think this is for the house. But this is for the house. All that stuff. This is um. Obviously, the same type of uh, pink insulation we put inside the garage, and a whole bunch of this green insulation we put yep. around the around the foundation, uh, just that lower two yeah. feet of the foundation on the uh, on the garage. Yeah, on the the other house. And actually, I should have no. Actually, no. This one goes on the outside of this one. Oh, but it's... they want on the other side of the house too. Yeah. Oh yeah. But on the outside of the foundation, this is an like, important detail for mm -hmm. for um, insulation. So it goes down like two feet, and that keeps the the foundation insulated. But this particular design. Is interesting. You, you go down two feet with insulation, with this green insulation, and mm -hmm. then out away from the building, like two feet, mm -hmm. and then you bury the entire thing. And mm -hmm. that like barrier, like makes it really easy for that building to keep the ground in that building to keep this like 40, 40, 50 degree yeah. temperature, because the outside air, like it has to go all the way down and out and up around this insulation right. in order to So we haven't done out. that yet though. Yeah, that's not done in this picture. That's obviously. not finished <clears throat> yet, but we'll, we'll do a video when Someday. we do that. We have the insulation, we just haven't done it yet. Yeah, it's... it's, it's, it's process, it's a process. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just a process. So, oh yes, we have doors now. Yeah, look, doors. another, looks like we have a one second video we of can, doors. Yeah, that's weird. <clears throat> well, it's a video. Sorry, I can't stop that. Yeah, don't worry about it. Okay. So, um, putting in the garage doors, that was, um, that was kind of tricky. We I had his know. dad came up that weekend too, yeah. so like whenever you know dad comes to visit, you're like, guess what? You can do yeah, some, door. You can do some work. So way over, I can't reach it. Ugh, way over Stand here. Up. Oh jeez, yep. over here. Get up over here. 
So these like you get these metal metal brackets from like just angle bar. Yes. From your big box store, and you have to measure the distance between here and here, make sure it's uh, the right and you know the right distance, and then the kit actually goes up pretty. Yeah, easy. it went pretty. Each had to follow. It came in directions. directions. So all I did was I sorted out all the packs. Yeah. You know, I put everything. I knew I had everything. I knew where every part was. I had it all spread out in a certain spot. So then we lost they, them. No, I did good. And then anytime they needed something, I was able to, you know, just describe the hooky thing. All right, the thing looks like this. It was the hooky easy. Thing, yeah. yeah, well, there were. There were these, like, hook things. Yeah, S hooks, yeah. There were. S hooks. S hooks. There it is. And nice um, doors now. So we had doors. Yep. Which is nice. And you see the reclaim takes and a little reclaim. bit of damage from the, uh, from the bulldozer going back and forth there, but. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's fine. Yep. That's just laying the, uh, some of the reclaim down. Oh, yeah. Yep. Looks good. Oh yeah, heat. so we weren't originally going to heat this three car. We weren't gonna permanently heat it. Right. But we wanted to be able to put heat in it, especially because sure. at some point I'm gonna be working out here, doing some things, especially if there's a more than never. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you want to work in your car, you want it to not be like seven thousand degrees below zero. Yeah. So. Yeah, I hear you. So this is a uh, uh, a unit that we that we got here. It's a it's a variable output pellet. Pellet stove. pellet stove. Yeah, so it, it yeah. does thirteen to forty four thousand BTU. Yeah. Um, which is actually pretty good. It's fine. For, for this. It's fine. Yeah. It's uh, I think it requires a little bit of planning if you want to heat it up. If you want to go out there, you have to turn on like an hour or two in, in advance, depending on how. Oh, you should do. We'll do a review on the pellet stove. Sure. Yeah. That that would be good because you can show how how often you have to fill it and all sure, that yeah. stuff. Because it's not something that just it's not like a regular heater, oil, or propane. You just turn it on, you set the thermostat, and you go. There yeah. are other things you have to do to it. I got but, this one because it has a huge hopper. It has an eighty pound yes. hopper on top, so um, it can actually go between. Uh, between low and high, I think it's 12 hours to like two days if you just have this thing on like low and yeah. just run. You can run straight on low for like two days without having a refill. Yeah, so that was that. That was a cold night putting that in. Yeah, that's It felt good when it. Why does everything suck? It is, okay, it is really hard to build your own stuff. Okay. But. Yeah, this is not, this is not fun. No. Right? Like, have, I don't know, I noticed myself saying, oh, I hated doing that. Did you hear how many times you yeah. should count? How many times I say I hated doing that? Um, if it was because fun, it's not easy. Like I'm not. This is not what I do for for a living. Like this is not. Yes, everyone. There wouldn't it. be contractors. No, exactly. And but if you need to save some money, or you want to want to try saving some money, or you're someone who just really likes to do stuff yourself, you want that. Right. To and do we'll that. go to the cost. The cost is actually oh, yeah. coming up soon, so yeah. that you'll get an idea about about uh. Yeah, how much you'll how save. How much money you won't spend. Doing yeah, something doing like some yourself. So I mean, it's it's not. There, there are many times <clears> in the dead of summer. When you're really hot and you're sweating and you have to wear pants because you're working and you have to wear hair protection and everything, and then in the opposite, as it gets colder out, you know you're freezing, right. working, but you got to get it done. So this was I remember it was an, I remember the stove being on. I was so happy because it was really chilly by this time that we did this. Oh look at this! So this is a super close up, super close our, up of our thermostat. So we went with Honeywell. This actually this unit I think it was about a hundred bucks. I mean. I mean, people have people, the Google yeah. stuff now, and they have Nest um, and yeah. all those other ones, but this, I don't know, I think this was like, it's not that so much that it was before, it was no, really Nest big, but before was it was really there. affordable as it is now. Yeah. So this uh, is pretty slick set up. It has an app, on, so you can do the same type of stuff on your phone. You say, yeah. I want to set it to a certain you know, temperature, yeah, you can do it live, or you can set schedules and... Yeah. And uh, it just hooked right up to your Wi-Fi. Right. So, this so, is about, so I mean, the workshop is just about a little feet away, right? but it, 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 oh yeah, so that's a good point too. It's a hundred yeah. something feet away, and it connect the Wi-Fi without a problem yeah. at all. It's, it's fine. Not a problem at all. And we really? had it hooked up to the pillow stove. Right. Oh look, it already snowed. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Welcome to winter. Welcome to winter already. So we hadn't even finished deciding on the front yet. Yeah, that that we ended up taking doing that another year. See, yeah. This is the, this is why I'm so happy about buying the Tyvek. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is like, this is a main staple. If you don't have a building, yeah, with Tyvek showing, then you don't belong in the state. Yeah. Yeah. You d yeah. It's, that's such a really good point. So it stayed like that for a year and a half. Yeah, it did stay like that for a while. It was fine. Actually, when we put siding on that, it was like the day I put it up. Yeah. So that's really. So good. it held up really well. So this right here, this um, ice skating rink. Ice skating rink and going down to the garage is actually. It's actually a, a pretty steady slope here. It drops yeah. maybe like two or three feet, maybe, mm -hmm. from like here to there, mm -hmm. and that's that's important because uh, 
it eventually I ended up regrading the driveway because it was a little bit too steep coming up to the garage. Yeah, so why do we get into it? Next slide. Oh yeah, oh no, do you? Can you so there you go, you can see like that the snow's kind of really this, close. Yeah. The other thing is that because the roof comes like this, the snow that comes off the roof lands right here. Yeah. And although you get a three car garage, you have to deal with the fact that the snow, if you oh, have yeah. snow, well who doesn't have snow? A lot of people don't have snow. Really? I think so. Can we go there? I think we should someday. Uh, the snow that comes off the roof, you gotta, you know, clear it out, obviously, because okay. you want to have access, but also because we have the flat pad here, unless you have a really good, uh, you know, slope, slope here, tapering away from the building, you're gonna, you're gonna have an issue with, with, with water, water inside the garage. Yeah. Oh yeah. You can that see you have the water on the run. You can see how much higher it is. I think it's about. I actually measured it when I regraded. Yeah. Like right here was like nine inches higher than here. So like this entire, like slow would just be like. Oh, I remember that. And then day. even though it was a drain pipe right here, Didn't matter. zero water went into the drain pipe. Well, because we put the reclaim over. Yeah, that's bad. We weren't thinking. Yep. Just weren't thinking. Yep, that was a fun day. Yeah. So you can see it's made it in. Well, it's making the insulation wet, which is the worst. Now I have to throw a bunch of insulation <coughs> away. Yep. And... Yeah, don't get your insulation don't wet. Don't get your insulation wet. Yeah. You can see the yep. pretty much the extent here. It went in... And it's pretty deep. I don't know, 10, 12 feet maybe? Yeah. I mean, I mean, there was uh, it was like at least maybe two inches of water here, so that was that was a big problem. Yeah, that was a really. The good news day. is I regraded this, I yep. regraded the driveway, and that's the best part about not being paved. It's right. Ex I took uh, oh. took that bulldozer, I took off the reclaim, which was, I don't know, two to thick. four or five inches in yeah. places, pushed it all the way to one side, took away the uh, the four inch gravel underneath, and laid the driveway back over it again, and yep. now it's like completely flat across here yeah, and it's great. snowed. It's fine. Oh yeah, we've had snow. I don't know, half a dozen times already this year and there's no, no water in the garage. No. We'll wait and see what happens in the spring. Stop it. Stop. Just saying. But we've had bad rain on top of snow. That's true. So it really should have gone in then. If it's going to go in, that's that's when it <clears> go in. <throat> yep. Ah yes, interior work. So let's like not look at all the stuff that's like all over the side. You can look at the stuff. Okay. Oh, it's a pile of stuff. Let me tell you. When you're building and you start working inside a place, you move piles more yeah. than like, it, it, like a third of your time is moving things out of the way to get to what you need to work on. So we built this garage partially to, because we needed space while we were building the other house. So, but we had, we had moved all of our stuff when, like when we were building and also as soon as we came over, our entire contents of our like lives were like inside this building. Yeah. So we need the space, absolutely. And you can see back behind me here, there's all this insulation, all this insulation that was went inside the other house and the insulation that goes inside yeah, this house. Oh. You see we're putting the lights in early, so there's the eight foot LED lights. Those are nice These lights. are just temporary, these came out. And then over on this side, I guess it's not, on that side, there's uh, oh, six four foot lights. Yeah. And uh, you can see miscellaneous stuff over here, like there's an old 40s lathe over here and like, like if you could work in a building. Stop. Stop it. If you could, my stuff work in a it. building that doesn't have stuff in it it's like oh it'll be so much better. Times better that's the thing because literally a third of your time is spent yeah, moving, moving things like moving sometimes things i would i would come out, come up to the property before we got out of work just to move piles because i knew we were going to be working on something i'm like i know we're going to be working on this state so mm -hmm. i'm going to move a pile right but that's really part of so it. another thing here this thing right here because this was actually this is below the scissor truss so that last scissor truss has those vertical two by yeah. two by fours so this right here, these have to be put in like all one at a time. So mm -hmm. that's another thing that was kind of a pain in the butt to do. And that was a reinforcement of the truss. That was a... Um, it was really just so that you can it. insulate it. Because oh. if you look at it, there's nothing between here and here. Oh, because yeah, this, this truss sits here and it sits over there. And there's nothing here except for the uh, the, the sheathing. Yeah. Right. Oh, actually, no, you oh, need sorry. to put those in to, 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 to nail the sheathing to. I actually. went ahead. Sorry. That's okay. Okay. So this, I'm actually really happy with, with how it turned out. Okay. So... What's the this uh, the oh. lumber yard actually gave us a roll. It was like this giant roll, like this big, of aluminum. And I'm looking at this, I'm saying, what in the yeah. world is this stuff? Yeah. And I realized that it's the aluminum that you would use to make all, fill all the soffits and all the, the, yeah. the fascia covers and stuff like that. Right. So <clears throat> you have to get a giant aluminum break, yeah. a, a, a aluminum bender, yeah. to, to form that stuff. And I think you have to be really good at it, too. Cause it's like origami you gotta fold all this yeah stuff. you have to fold these so, and fold so what do you, we did here which is actually really really useful these these parts came right out of right out of lowe's we had yeah. uh this was like a, a so we three kicked inch, the roll to the curb a three yeah we, we, we just gave it back it was actually kind of expensive yeah so we don't need this but there's like a three inch drip edge here so it right. comes up three inch and then drips 
onto this edge, and then this is like a section piece of drip edge, which comes over and goes here. And then up here, coming down the edge of the truss is like another piece of like six inch strip. They just kind of like fit so right in. Everything is covered in fit. in uh, in in metal, and you can see these are like the eaves, and here you have the soffits. And the reason I took this picture actually is because figuring out how to do this weird thing. Oh actually, if you yeah. Actually, go to the next picture, that. you can see it. This is kind of weird. Normally, you have a building. This was done by a professional. This was a professional. So this is what they do. So you can see this. Someone someone made this, and it looks looks awesome. It's nice. It's not easy to do. So we did that little origami with the uh, the soffits to kind of fold them around the corner there, and that yeah. actually worked really well. I actually didn't. I wasn't there for that. Yeah, that's good. I did. I because I no. <clears throat> mm -mm. I don't have that like ability to do that. So I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go do something else because I couldn't do that. Hey, that's it. It's We're finished. Done. It's finished. So that is how we built our three bay. Workshop. That's it. That's it. That's so, it. oh yeah, I didn't show you the installation. So the installation we put in, we put uh, R13 yep. in the walls. Yep. Uh, on the attic truss part of it, we put an R21. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 21. And above the uh, scissor truss, we put an R60. I thought it was, oh, 30 or 60. We put two layers of two 30. Two layers of 30. Know. Yeah, two layers So it sounds crazy that we put 60 on this side and 20 on this side, but it's just because you don't have any more space in the trusses. Yeah. That's what, that's what we have space to put in. Yeah. And again, it's like... Actually, well, I ended up doing a um, calculation on the on the on the building and found that effectively, I think it was like I wish I had the numbers. It's like forty percent of the heat of the building you lose through the through the pad. That's crazy. So it's like the doors don't matter, the windows don't matter, mm -hmm. the roof almost effectively doesn't matter. It's all about infiltration, which is like the gaps under the doors here, like any air that comes in here, mm -hmm. and the the exposure of this pad to cold air is mm -hmm. where you're gonna lose like yeah. something like 60 or 70 percent of your heat yes yeah, i would have thought it was the doors because the doors have like no air i would have thought it was the roof because i thought heat rises and that's that's not really the case <laughs> uh, although i will say the uh the attic truss in that summer does get warm it's like it does get hot it's not out there. super stifling but it gets no, up but it's to, hot it gets up to like 90 probably maybe. yeah oh it gets hotter than 90 up there are you kidding me it's 90 right now it gets hotter than 90 up there it's we'll we'll take well you know what this summer yeah We'll put a thermometer up there. Okay, we'll, we'll, see see. Right. we'll see who's right. It's I'm gonna say more than ninety. Okay, fine, ninety. Fine. Okay. Is it more? Is that it? I think that's it. All right. So I guess one of the big questions that most people have when they find out that we built our own workshop was what did it cost? Right. Right. Like how much did you save, or would you go extra? Okay, but but what we spent on it was his gym's. Right. So here's the lowdown. Yeah, here's the that numbers. Because you don't need to talk about that yet. Do you so, want me to get out of the way? So here's the items. If someone wants to know where the money went, I'll go over here. So <laughs> the I'm guy paying the bill wants here. to know mm -hmm. where in the world you spent this money. Yeah. This is where it's at. So the kit, eleven thousand five hundred. Uh, that's just a flat kit with no. It's just the kit. That's just the building itself with like not and then all these other things. This is basically like everything I could think of that actually went into this building. Went mm -hmm. through all the receipts, okay, found the right, actual cost of all that. this. So, Sorry. so what I did down here is I, I gave. Two sets of numbers. So this is the, the cost estimates per square foot for just the garage part. So like if you weren't going to do the loft, for example, mm -hmm. then you'd be sitting at 864 square feet. And then if you went with the loft, you would be dealing with about 1,100 square feet. So basically, depending on how, how much of the build out you want to talk about, it starts at $16 a square foot and ends up about $29 a square foot, depending on depending on what you include. So okay. I gave those numbers here so you can kind of give an idea. So mm -hmm. uh, let's say we're not including the loft. It's $20 a square foot for the building and the pad. So that's basically like if we were to build this building, we got everything that we got. Right. It would have cost $20 a square foot. So okay. if you had multiply this out, it'd be, I don't know, $16,000, $17,000 maybe. Okay. Well, and that then, would make sense because that would be the eleven. dollars thousand right plus the plus pad, the forms plus, plus the, the uh plus the, the concrete wood. yep yeah plus the four inch gravel base which okay. you might not even have that cost so we added a lot of expensive features right. in here so we add in an electrical and lighting so the electrical is you know 100 amp service that includes the wire going 140 feet up to the other building um mm -hmm. we have that we have the panel we have 10 outlets on three circuits we have interior and exterior lights Actually, the lighting you can see here, lighting was, I didn't have the exact number, but I know it's over a thousand dollars. Yeah, about a thousand. So the LED lights are really, really expensive. Um, I know they're getting a lot cheaper. And again, without mercilessly pitching Harbor Freight, I know they have some, some cheaper lights. I don't know if they're any good, though. Yeah. Um, and then, so yeah, so you put in well, electricity and lighting, $23 a square foot. 
you put in insulation, it comes up to 25, and you put in the heat, or the, our particular heat source, which is a pretty significant heat source. I mean, this was, if you look at the number over here, $4,000 yeah. for a pellet stove installed. I mean, for that price, we installed a uh, $100,000, you know, oil burner. Yeah. So, uh, so that- 100 that you BTU. Could, 100,000 BTU. You oil said $100,000. Hundred thousand dollars, man! I just, wow, that was I'm glad you're here. That was an expensive one. Whoa! The watchers are whoa, like, what is he talking about? Whoa, that was that was big. Hundred thousand BTU, BTU was about the same. Burner. I will say we the pellet stove, though. We had a friend who uh, works at a pellet, a wood stove shop. Right. So we didn't have to pay. He didn't charge us for installation. No, he did. He, he charged us for the bucks. He did. Yeah. I ain't give him a call. Yeah, All right, give him a call. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like it's, no, I'm kidding. We don't mind paying people. You know? No, you can't be mad. Like so guy. the labor still three hundred bucks was nothing yeah. to have someone help you put in a pellet stove. But I mean, I don't like for me personally watching something like this. Like the per square foot means nothing. Like not to be mean. Yeah, sure. But like that number means nothing. I like to see that total number. Yeah. So your total numbers here is twenty six thousand dollars, but that includes a thousand dollars worth of lights. Yep. Um, how many, like a thousand dollars worth of electrical stuff, you know, fifteen hundred dollars okay. worth of insulation and a four thousand dollars soap. Right. So let's say, okay, so that's if you want it, you want electricity in your workshop, because yep. not everybody does. If you're just going to leave your car in it, you might not yeah, even absolutely. need electricity in it. So for electricity, yep. um, to be able to be light lighting, to be good enough to work in, that's the thing, because our oldest son does a lot of uh, woodworking, so he does a lot of work in there as long and fixing cars. Yep. So the lighting, I think you spent more on than the average person would, because you really wanted it bright for those sorts of applications. Yeah, there's a ton of light. In there's a garage. lot of light in the um, garage. I actually almost made a mistake of putting in much smaller lights, <sighs> and. Um, a guy at the electrical the electrical store actually talked me up, and I, I kind of think he was just upselling me. But honestly, I'm glad that we mm -hmm. put the bigger the bigger brighter lights. Yeah. Because if you're working on stuff, you do any work on cars or really anything, it's like how many times you'd be like, I, why don't I have more light? Right. Exactly. The lighting I think is important. It is. Yeah. It is. Every, it is it's very bright uh, workshop. But something that's not on here would be <clears throat> the cost of cutting down the trees. Sure. Removing the stumps. And doing just that general site work because that's something that we did completely on our own that only cost fuel and the chainsaw. Yeah, I mean, true. really. So when that's what I'm trying to think. Like, if you had somebody else do all the work, there's a lot of hidden costs. Like a, the person has to bring out the excavator. They're right. going to charge you thousands of dollars just to get the equipment to your site. Right. You know, they dig your trench. Actually, the guy that did the trench for this building yeah. was like, I don't know, like fifteen thousand dollars or something to dig a trench and, and fill it back in. So yeah. that's a huge, huge cost. Right. So the cost excavation. So so this is this so this so when you're looking at these numbers, it's important to realize that if you just have a you know piece of land and you're ready to go, it's going to cost more than this if you're having somebody out there. Yep. What um, you see is what you get. Everything yeah, on exactly. the sheet is exactly what's on the sheet, and nothing right. more, nothing less. Yeah, yeah. So that was our cost. So that building cost about twenty six thousand from start to finish. Start to finish. Yep. Yeah, and that in a lot of sweat equity. Lots of time. Yeah. So I didn't get. Pay what? I did not get paid for all my labor. I didn't get paid. I didn't get paid for my labor. I'm gonna demand. I'm gonna demand payment. payment. I didn't. Rent, I demand payment for all my my labor. <laughs> I'm not sure if you can charge for that. I don't know. Can I? <laughs> <laughs> Take a mortgage out and then repay myself. <laughs> and then pay. Yeah, for it. I'm not sure if that's a winning It doesn't work like here. that. So, so that is basic. Um, our cost for this. Yep, for this that's build. all the costs. Yeah. Is that it? Any other hidden costs? I don't know. I think that's it. I think that's the last slide. Yeah. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully helps some of you guys out to think about, you know, I yeah, mean, you get an estimate. If you get a get a contractor and ask them what's going to cost to build, you know, show them the exact building, right? Show them the exact specs, and they'll give you a number. And if you want to do it yourself, it'll be this number. And you know, we were trying to do two different buildings at the same time, so yeah. it, we kind of had our time split between two things. But you know, I, I wish I we counted the days we worked on that versus not, but. It was over a course of several months that we were working on it, but it was really sporadic, you know, like a weekend here, you know, after work here. And this is, you know, we, mm -hmm. we work, you know, full-time jobs. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, we, you know, it's not like we're living out here building stuff. No. It's like it's a second job. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we come over here at 4 o'clock. Come up and work and go to your other job. And, you know, work until, well, in the summer until, you know, it's dark at, you know, 8.30, 9 o'clock. And um, it, was, it was, it was a lot of time yep. invested in it. But so you'll see our other videos where we go into the other house, house. <laughs> the other house, the other build, the other garage, Structure. which turned into our house. 
that's a whole other ordeal. That's just a whole other. Wait for that video. Just wait for that one. That's <laughs> if, way more. If you want to know about that, just, yeah, just subscribe more. and you'll see that, yeah, you'll that disaster soon you'll enough. You'll see it all. But there's a lot of stuff that we worked on, a lot of stuff. So, again, anything that you want to see again or you want more details on, if you don't understand something, just put it in the comment section and we'll get back to you. Yeah, that's it. Sure. Good luck. That's yeah. it. Good luck. Yeah, good Have luck. Fun. Good luck. <laughs> you know. Done? Yeah. All right.